So if you've watched my video guide on the Toxic Rain Trickster, you know that there is a pretty huge upgrade that you can get by crafting a spell bow. Now, the bow for the Toxic Rain build is slightly different from the ED Contagion spell bow, so I figured I'd make a video specifically on how to make this one. And also, I'm going to give you the information on the cheap version as well as the insanely expensive one if you want to uh, flex your crafting knowledge a little bit. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you want to take the Toxic Rain build to the next level, you really got to have this bow. Now, some people are just going to go out and they're just going to purchase the bow and they're not going to worry about it. However, I know there are some of you out there, maybe even some that are on solo cell phone, who are wondering, how am I ever going to get a hold of this bow? Well, I've got you covered. I'm going to give you all the steps on how to obtain the bow, how to actually craft the bow, how to obtain the crafts to benchcraft the bow, and everything else that you're going to need to craft that bow that you've been looking for. Now remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video so that more people can see it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this. And remember, if you want to see sneak peeks of some of the builds that I'm playing, as well as seeing some of the highlights that I post on this channel happen live, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. It's a best way to see the new stuff that I've got cooking. Now, without further ado, let's get into the guide. All right, boys, so this is my Toxic Rain Trickster. Um, I've kind of taken this character apart, but I put him back together just for you. So I'm going to be showing you how to craft the bow similar to this one that we have here. Now, this isn't the ideal bow, but it's pretty close. We're one tier away on damage over time multiplier, and the ideal bow would have an attack speed suffix on top of it instead of the reduced attribute requirements. I'm going to tell you how to get all of that. I'm also going to tell you how to get a much cheaper version that is much, much simpler to do as well. So the first step is actually obtaining the bow. Now you can very, very easily, even in solo cell phone, obtain a low tier, easy to craft version of this bow. And that is through the porcupine cards. Now this is going to give you an item level 50, six link, short Short bow. Now, the best bows that you can use for this build are fast attacking bows. You want either a short bow or a thicket bow. Those are the two ideal ones because they have 1.5 attack speed, as you can see here. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that if you use the porcupine bow, you can't get the top tier damage over time multiplier or attack speed rolls on this bow. They're just not possible on it. If you really want to have the top tier modifiers available, you are going to be wanting to go for an eye level 82 bow. Now, the ideal base for this is either a short bow or a Thicket bow, like I said. Now, a short bow is going to be the base that the Essence Ring Contagion build uses as well, so that is probably going to be more expensive to just outright buy a six link version of. You can get a six link thicket bow probably for a little bit cheaper, most likely until this video goes live. But if you do want to craft your own six link bow, there is a way to go about it. Now, the way that you would do this is with something called Perfect Fossils. So you're going to see here, these fossils here give you improved quality. Now, if you're not aware, the chance for a bow or an, any item in the game to become six linked is higher dependent upon the quality. Now what you would do is you would take these perfect fossils, you drop them into a singular chaotic resonator, and you would use these to get 30% quality onto this bow. You're going to use the highest percentage quality craft that you have. I don't have any good ones at the moment. I've only got seven to 12 and it's pretty expensive. You can get better ones than this. You would try to get this up to around like, you want about 48 if you can help it. And then once you've got it that high, you can actually just dump fusings into it and it will reduce the amount that you need on average by a ton. I think my average on a 48% bow is roughly like five to 600 fusings. That's the average that I've come out to with what I've done. Way cheaper than the like 1200 or 1500 that it can cost for just a simple 20% quality. So once you actually have your six link bow and you've got everything ready, it doesn't need to be any kind of influence. It doesn't need to be synthesized. I mean, you could use a synthesized bow if you're absolutely over flowing with cash and have no idea what to do with it, but then you probably don't need this video if you've got that much money because you could go buy the bow. So you've obtained your bow, whether it is the porcupine bow or an eye level 82 thicket bow. Now, the reason behind using specifically an eye level 82 bow is because that's the first level that you can get the top tier damage over time multiplier craft on. Anything higher than that doesn't unlock anything very much better, and it adds in a ton of possible other modifiers that you could get instead. So I level 82 is a sweet spot. Any less than that, and you can't get the modifier that you're looking for any more than that. You're going to add in more modifiers to the pool, thus making the bow harder to craft. So the first thing that we need to talk about is we need to talk about actually obtaining the crafts. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can either go on to like the TFT Discord, you can go on to my Discord, you can find somebody, a friend, someone that has all of the crafts and just have them do it for you. However, that's not always possible and you may not feel comfortable just handing over a bunch of money to somebody. So what I would say another option that you can do is you can actually just unlock the crafts yourself. Now the crafts that we're looking for are we're looking for can have up to three crafted modifiers, plus two to level of socketed support gems, and 40% to chaos damage over time multiplier. Those are the three crafts that we're looking for. Now, the first one, which is called multi-mod, it's three crafted modifiers now, is actually gotten from the Pale Court. 
You can get that from Navali's prophecies. She gives you these prophecies where it says like the Pharaoh Lord and you have to go through all five stages of them. Or you can actually just go and you can just buy the pieces to the Pale Court. You'll see here that they are Eber's Key, Yeril's Key, Inya's Key, and Volker's Key. So if we check out like Eber's Key, we take a look here. This one is for Chaos is what it looks like for that key. So you would just go through, you'd buy each of the keys, and then after you get all of those together, you'd go to the Pale Court, you'd fight the boss there. You may want to look up a guide on fighting the boss if you have a weaker character. And when you complete it, you'll obtain the multi-mod recipe. So the next thing is going to be a little bit more difficult. Now I've actually linked the exact parameters that you need down in the description, so you can go check it down in there. But what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to search for Katarina's Veiled. Now we're trying to get plus two to socketed support gems. The way that you get that is through unveiling items that drop off of Katarina, which is the mastermind boss from June, right? So you're going to see here that this modifier is called Katarina's Veiled. Now, any weapon that Katarina drops is able to have this. However, there is one thing that you should keep in mind is that the item level of the weapon matters. And you can see because if we come over to Craft of Exile, we choose two-handed weapons, we choose bow, we come all the way down here, we go to Crafted, and we look for socketed support gems, you'll see that level two of socketed support gem starts at 80. So you have a choice here. The thing that I'm going to link down in the description is going to have this item level already in there. If you do specifically buy items that are item level 80 or higher, you have a chance, and it is only a chance, to unveil the top tier version of the mod and just get it immediately. So you can take the item level 80 out of here if you want and just go for lower item level items, but it's not really going to matter that much. It's going to require more of them and it probably won't be very much cheaper. That's probably the easiest way to unlock that because getting Katarina to drop items for you naturally is gonna be pretty tough. You're gonna have to do a lot of farming. So that's how you get the actual plus two to support gems. You unveil it through items that draw from Katarina. Now you'll see here it says veiled, Katarina's veiled, and it says empty prefix modifiers one. The mod is a prefix and it is from only Katarina's veiled. So those two things are important because you need to make sure that it's a prefix that you're unveiling and that it's Katarina's modifier. Now, the other thing that we're looking for is chaos damage over time multiplier. Now this can be gotten from both one hands and two hands. And the chaos damage multiplier that we're looking for is for two hands. I think that they both work the same. You can let me know down in the comments whether or not that's wrong. I'm not 100% certain. However, I think that they work the same. If you wanna really be safe, just do the two hands or check down in the comments. I'm sure someone down there will let you know. What we're looking for is just simply veiled. We're looking for one empty prefix modifier because it is a prefix that we're looking for. It can be any weapon, right? So we are going to be buying these and trying to unveil chaos damage over time multiplier. Now, once again, you can go to Craft of Exile and you can look here. You can see it says chaos damage over time multiplier and you can see that tier one requires level 81. If you really want to make it fast and you have a bunch of extra money, you can just buy eye level 81 items and above and just hope that you get lucky and get that. Otherwise, you can just buy the lower tier ones and slowly unlock it over time. I think it takes like eight or so to be able to unlock it if you get only the low tier ones. And once you've got all of those things together, you actually have the crafts. Now we need to actually get the bow ready to be multi-modded. All right, so you have all of the mods, you have someone that's able to craft it for you, or you can craft it yourself. You're ready to actually physically craft the bow. It's a very specific set of things that you want to do. Now, you're going to need a pretty good amount of alterations, you're going to need a good amount of regal orbs, you're going to need a good amount of scouring orbs, as well as augmentation orbs. Now this might take some time. It's not a super easy process. However, on a low eye level bow like this, it's actually significantly easier to do than on a high level bow. Because on a higher level bow, there's significantly more modifiers that you can roll with these alteration orbs. Now I, unless I get extremely lucky, I'm not going to go through all of the way of making sure that I get these specific modifiers, but I'm gonna give you an idea of how it goes. So what we're looking for is we are looking for plus one to level of socketed gems. We are not looking for plus to the level of socketed bow gems. That is not important to us. We are specifically looking for plus to level of socketed gems. The other modifiers that we're looking for are damage over time multiplier and attack speed. Those are the only other things that we really care about. Now, if you're crafting a basic version of this bow, all that you are worried about is getting that plus to level of socketed gems. That is the only thing that you care about. So once you get that, you can skip to the next step. However, what I'm gonna show you is that what we're really looking for here is any of those modifiers. So we're gonna sit here, we're gonna alteration orbit, we're gonna try to see one of those modifiers and then we'll decide what to do. Okay, so I actually got super lucky here and I got it almost instantly. 
Now, <laughs> this, this actually is going to work out pretty perfectly. It's not that hard to roll on this bow, but still. We got a Paragon Shortbow. Now, from this point on, you can do a few things. Now, if you are making the very basic version of this bow, you can simply augment the bow, and it doesn't matter what you get. It will not mess up your end product. However, if you're going for the very good version of this bow, you are going to want to augment this bow and hope to get damage over time multiplier or attack speed. Keep in mind, if this is the low eye level version of it, the second modifier is going to be a low level version of it. So we'll augment orb here and probably not get what we're looking for. We got cold resistance. We're gonna roll with this right now, just because I don't want to have to re-roll this bow again, but you're going to see, imagine we got something good, right? So from this point, you're going to get this bow. If this was a very good bow, say you rolled um, plus one to level of socket of gems and a high tier chaos, or rather a high tier damage over time multiplier. The next thing that you would want to do is you would want to beast craft this. Now you can see in my inventory here, I have this thing called an imprint. You can see where it says Paragon's Thicket Bow of Dispersion. Now, if I use this imprint on this bow right here, it would turn back into a blue bow that just has plus one to level of socket of gems and damage over time multiplier. Now, the way that you get this is through Einhar and beast crafting. Now, I'll show you here what it is that we're looking for because there's two beasts that we're interested in. So you'll see on the altar here, we have create an imprint of a magic item. You can see, I don't know how to say that, chimeral, crassic chimer, chimeral, whatever it is. You can use this on this magic item and it will create that imprint that I told you about that allows you to take a step back. Now, once you do that, once you create this imprint, it is a one-time deal and this beast costs around 30 chaos right now. It is not cheap to do this because you are going to need to make sure that you don't want to have to reroll this again. I only suggest that you beast craft with that chimeral if you get a really good modifier. If you're going for the top end bow, that's the only time that I suggest that you do it. Now, what you're looking to do here, you are looking to regal this bow and get a suffix. We need a suffix. If we get a prefix, there's a couple steps that we can take. However, we are really looking for a suffix. Now, we're going to regal this bow. You'll see that we have one prefix and one suffix, and to be able to multi-mod it properly, we have to get another suffix. It's very important that we do. So we'll regal this bow. We'll see what we get. We got dexterity. So dexterity is a suffix. Now, I'm not going to say that this bow is good. It's not the worst that you could possibly have, but it's not good. Now, say that we did get a prefix. The thing that I would suggest that you do if that happened is you would go to the blood altar here and you would want to get this thing that says add a suffix and remove a random prefix, which is the ferric links alpha. This will give you a 50-50 chance to remove that bad prefix that you might have gotten. Because if we rolled a prefix, we would have had both the paragons, which is the plus one level of socket of gems, as well as that random prefix that you got. This is going to give you a single 50-50 chance to get back to a good bow and then you can just multi-mod from there. It's going to remove one of the prefixes and give you a random suffix. So you'll end up with the bow that I have here. Now, like I said, the ideal bow is going to be something that has damage over time multiplier as well as maybe like attack speed on it. Trust me that that bow is insanely hard to get and it is a lot of currency investment. You will probably have to do hundreds of regals and potentially like 20, 30, 40, 50 beast prints. It's going to get insanely expensive. That's why I just stopped at getting the chaos, the damage over time multiplier and the plus one level of socket of gems. I took whatever else I could get on top of that. Once you have all of those things together, you have the bow with plus one level of socket of gems, the two suffixes that you were going for if you spent the time to get the better ones or not. You're going to take this bow over to your crafting bench and you will craft multi-mod, you will craft plus two to level of support gems and you will craft chaos damage over time multiplier, the high tier one. Now keep in mind, it is very, very important that when you craft those modifiers, you do not scour at any time. You will lose all of your currency. It is not cheap to be able to roll all of those modifiers. Multi-mod costs two exalt. The plus two to level of socketed support gems costs two exalt. And then on top of that, the chaos damage over time multiplier costs like eight chaos. So you really wanna make sure that you've got the bow that you're looking for before you invest all of that money. It's gonna be four exalt, and eight chaos to craft it yourself. And if you're getting it from someone else, you should be tipping them or you should be paying whatever their fee is to be able to craft your item for you. And that's pretty much it. That's all that you need to know about. 
It doesn't matter if you're going for the very high tier one or the low tier one. I've kind of given you an idea of how to do it. Now, I just want to remind you, if you are going for this high tier type bow that I did here with the damage over time multiplier, I really do not suggest that you go any further than just getting plus one a level of socketed gems and either damage over time multiplier or attack speed. If you're going to try to go for all three, you have a long and difficult road ahead of you. It is going to take a lot of currency and a lot of time. However, you should be able to, with enough time spent, to be able to get plus one a level of socket of gems and one or the other. And that's pretty much all that you need to know. The bow is an absolutely huge damage increase. I mean, when you put on this bow, you're going to feel the increase in damage, and especially in single target, it's very significant. And that's pretty much it. Remember, in the actual POB for the Toxic Rain Trickster, there are written instructions on how to make that bow, just like I told you in this video. This video goes quite a bit more in depth, and it's giving you like visual instructions and ideas on how things go, so there's much more information here. If you need help beyond everything that's been in this video and what's been in the path of building, I suggest that you join my Discord. The link is down in the description. There's some people in there that might be able to help you figure out if you're like having issues or you're worried about what the next step is on the bow or what you should do. You can find a bunch of helpful people down in the POE question section. There is even a couple people that can do those crafts for you. I want to warn you that I do not have control over the people that are in my Discord. I'm not not responsible for anything that happens with them. If you're going to try to take crafts from someone that you don't really know, be prepared to lose all of your items and potentially ask for collateral or something like that. Look for somebody with a very high ranking in the Discord and just make sure that you are willing to lose anything that you're just going to randomly trade to people because sometimes there's not that nice of people out there. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you'll be able to go out and craft your own bow. Hopefully you'll be able to get to that next step on the Toxic Rain Trickster. It's an insanely good build. I cleared the entire game with it, no problem whatsoever. And that bow really does does make a huge amount of difference. So remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and stay safe out there in Rayclast, and I'll see you guys in the next video.